landed on this channel. This is where I do cycling videos, both inspirational and entertaining. And I do love a deep dive road bike, reviewing all the bits and pieces that go on it, which is what this video is going to be about. So, a couple of months ago, I was out visiting Rob Eva. He's the GM of SRAM Australia, and got a little bit of a project going. The bike I'm riding at the moment, Chapter 2 Rare Ray. We've got SRAM one by and also some zip 808 wheels i'm not riding the 808s now but that's what we're going to be reviewing earlier in the year the one by and the zip 808s and while i was out there we're talking about rim versus disc brakes on road bikes and i was saying is it true that rim brakes are going to die out 2020 and beyond and he couldn't tell me exactly but certainly confirmed that all the technology is going into disc as you would expect and he's a big fan of disc despite the fact that you know some people out there are experiencing issues including myself so we talked about that and he explained why he's a big fan of disc brakes in this video i also think there's probably a couple of parts to this first part is this video which is the actual system itself and then mike one of my subscribers was saying well what about the impact on the bike in terms of its geometry because clearly that changes when you put on disc brakes given the fact that the the force of the brake is in a different part of the bike so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a part two of this video once i've experienced it myself once i've ridden the same road bike with disc and then rim to be able to truly test that out and if anyone else out there's had experience with that and can tell me the difference in terms of riding experience what they've felt let me know in the below description area or the below comment section and let's get into this video i want you to tell me the difference between a through axle and a skewer what's okay. going on okay welcome to 2018 <laughs> just about 2019 <laughs> this is called a through axle so this is uh we've been riding this on mountain bikes for now 20 30 years yep and this is what we've been riding on a road bike for maybe 100 years i've been around that long but it's a long time hold them both up together for me next side by side so this is the source of a lot of flex this is the source of um some issues with threads getting pulled off yeah and you know people like us at zip make them all titanium and nice and light and everything yep. but this is a really important part because your life is basically relying on that thread hang on one fits in the other um, and yeah, you can get maybe a little bit quicker wheel change with this, yep. but the point is, I want to be safe. I want my bike to be stiff. And this, along with uh, a big hole in the wheel and a big hole in the fork, is now a point where it's going to make the bike a very strong, stable ride. Yeah. And, right. and Is it less aerodynamic, though? I would say it's more aerodynamic, because if you look right. at this in the bike, to answer your question, if I put this in the bike here, and we, we're using um, tools now to put these in bikes. So I wouldn't call that slow, but I wouldn't call that under aer aerodynamic. Like yep. compared to that, that hangs out there. It's, you see, it's a bit wider now? It is a bit wider. It's, it's yeah. 10 mil wider 10 on the mil front. Wider. Okay. And on the rear, it's about uh, 12 mil wider. Yeah, so okay. it's a little bit wider axle, but what that does enables you to run more gears. Yep. As you can see, a lot of companies are now going to, well, Campex gone to 12 speed. We've gone to 12 speed on mountain bike. Yep. But it's room to grow in the future as well. Yeah, so right. along with disc brakes, along with more gears, along with, and the more gears, it's not a bad thing, it gives you more range without having big gaps in between. Yeah. And it also runs the bike cooler as well, so it'll run the rear hub cooler, it runs everything cooler. Is it an aerodynamical? I'm not sure every person <laughs> riding a bike wants every millimetre of aerodynamics, but it's not a bad thing either. Have the skewers been failing at all? Yes, skewers okay. fail all the time. Right. And lots of different reasons happen why skewers fail. Um, you know, wheels not in properly. You've heard of the lawyer tap scenario, lawyer yeah. tabs. Yeah. So they were introduced on bikes because consumers didn't know how to put wheels in bikes properly. Yeah. Um, so the lawyer tabs were introduced to do that. So a lot of the race teams were doing that and filing them off. They've been stopped from doing that. But yeah. if you do a wheelie and your front wheel's off or you roll over something, yeah. um, your front wheel can come out. It can't come out with a through axle. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah, okay. And if it does come out, your axle's going to be hanging out the side. Maybe you shouldn't be walking on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't noticed that. <laughs> if you haven't noticed that, exactly. So, um, yeah, and... For some people, the skewer's a little bit complicated to work on. It, 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 you know, they understand it's got to go on one side, not the other side. Right. Um, you know, you, you, how the cam works. With a through axle, it's either in or it's out. There's, yeah, no, yeah. there's no halfway. Yeah, cool. So that's the beauty of it. So I used a tool on the front. So if you come to the back, it actually comes with this quick release part here. Yeah. So the quick release can go around to anywhere. That undoes the axle. And then if I want to pull it off, 
I can just pull it off here somewhere. I've got a broken hand. That comes off. Yeah, right. And this goes in the front here, and that becomes that skewer as well. And that yeah. just sits in there. That's it. Right. To undo, nice and simple. I'm, I'm weak as at the moment. <laughs> and so that's always, all you do. Murphy's so. Law, nice and simple. And this is the other thing, was putting the front wheel in or the back wheel, unless it's in perfect, it's going to rub. Particularly with this or even rim brake. This can only go in one way. It can yeah, only right. go in perfect. So you're never going to get it crooked like you sometimes do with a... Exactly. Yeah. You know, sometimes it rubs on the frame or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yep. So it's going to run perfectly right. Yeah, okay, cool. So that's basically it. All right. Disc versus rim brakes. What do you got for me, Rob? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things with uh, with this versus rim brakes, and a lot of people just compare the two brakes. Well, it's not only about that. The rim brakes does a lot of other things. It heats the tire up. It heats the tube up. It heats the tubular up. It it, it can deform the wheel if you don't have a right brand wheel. Yeah. My idea is the only thing this rim should be doing is holding a tire on. Nothing more, nothing less. If you've got heat, a lot of heat going into this, it puts a lot of pressure on the tire, tube, or whatever system you're running. That might be fine for once, twice, 10 times, but eventually that tight tube is gonna fail yep. and you're gonna have a sudden blowout because yep. it, it gets so hot and it gets cold again. Happens often, doesn't it? Happens a lot, yeah, yeah. and people don't realize what that, yeah. what that happened. I've actually picked up a few people on the side of the road in bike races with that problem. They go, oh, I don't know what happened, my tires just blew out. Yep. That's maybe things. So we take the heat away completely from there. Now we have an, a global industry standard um, stainless steel braking surface with a metal sintered brake pad which is it's a DOT, Department of Transport, standardised braking surface. So what that does now, it offers less flex down here than yep. up here because the wheels tend to flex a little bit more up here than they do. Yep. With a through axle, the heat is contained right where you want it, down right. the bottom. It's not going to affect your ride whatsoever. Yeah, right. Right? And then for me, the only time... <laughs> you might love it. The only time disc brakes are better is when you want to use your brakes. Yeah, All right. the time. Right. In hot conditions, dry conditions, wet conditions, windy conditions, they'll always work better. What about the sensitivity? I've ridden three different bikes with disc brakes and they've all made sort of a meat cleaver sound or rubbing sound at some stage during the period I've trialled them for. So first thing with disc brakes is they need to be set up properly. So I say if you're using Shimano, use Shimano uh, pads, use Shimano rotors, use all that. If you're using yeah. SRAM, use SRAM pads. Don't use aftermarket stuff. Yeah. Um, try and keep that. That's number one. And the other thing is that people forget is they need to be running. They need to be running properly. Yeah. So what that consists of is check your manual, but we say hours you want to get hours up to 40 50 k an hour break hard but don't stop break really really hard get the thing really really hot now i'm fortunate enough i live up halfway up the daniels and i've got a bit of a hill yep. so by the time i get down to the bottom of my hill i can heat them up yep. and let them off heat them up so what we're trying to do is get a pad transfer from the uh, organic or the metal scented pad onto the rotor yep. and that becomes a much better braking surface yeah, right. but here's the key thing you don't get your brakes really really hot you know where it's it's 100 degrees and hold your brake on because what that does, it puts more of a brake transfer on that one spot. So when you go and use that brake again, it leaves a high spot. So when you stop, you leave your brakes off and let them cool, let them go really cold, and then it shouldn't happen after that. Yeah. So there is definitely a braking period and every bike needs to do that. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, maybe riding on beach road or you live in a flat area, um, they don't understand that, they don't get that. But then they go, oh, my brakes are a bit squeaky, they're not working. Because what happens, they've actually polished the surface, they haven't got the brake pad onto the rotor. Yeah, right. Okay. And then they need to match. So if you find that it's polished and it's not working, you need to replace the pads and the rotor to make right. sure they work properly. Or I just take it on a big hill and go and burn them in. Right, does that make it more expensive, like longevity-wise, over no. the long term? No. no, not at all. It'll actually last longer, it'll be quieter, and it okay. works better. Yeah, right, okay. So none of my brakes squeak, none of yeah. my brake brakes work. And here's the other thing as well, I recommend 160 for your every, av average everyday person. Yep. They just work all the time everywhere. It gives yep. a little bit more insurance. Yeah, okay. So a lot of bike brands are coming out with 140s, they might be fine until they're not, and then you've got a big problem. Yeah, okay. So I run 160s, you can see on my road bike here, on my other bikes, or my gravel bikes, yep. and that to me just works. Yeah, it gives okay. me a little bit more insurance. It gives me a little bit more stopping power. Yeah. Because if you're ripping down Mount Hotham and you need to stop, you need to stop. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, somebody that's a fan of rim calling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's actually a time trialist. Who doesn't know about riding bikes? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, I did have one question. I, I've heard that um, most manufacturers, this is it, what I'm hearing in the industry, they're gonna stop producing rims anyway by 2020. Is that any accuracy in that or? 
You can't sell. I can pretty much assure you, we, we, we don't build bike frames or design frames at SRAM. Um, however, working with the majority, the biggest brands, there is no rim brake technology anymore. Yeah, so right. they've stopped rim brake technology, doesn't matter the time trial, road bike, cross bike. And cross is pretty much gone long, long ago. And some of the diehards want to hang on to it, but there, there, there will be no more technology. What are the diehards say? The diehards still wanted to run two by on their, on their cross bikes and they wanted to run V brakes right, on okay. their cross bikes and Dolls stuff like that. Um, there's people that want to run carburetors in their cars and, yeah. and uh, you know, um, yeah, old fashioned stuff. Yeah. It, it, we've moved on from those days. So yeah. when you get a bike and it's, and it's got disc brakes on it, I, I, I can't believe that anyone would want to go back to a rim brake. And if they did, that's up to them. I don't want to ride with them. <laughs>